Jesus. Hi, I'm Isopod Mike, and today I'm going to go over calcium and its importance to isopods and what to do for calcium for isopods. So first question we have to ask ourselves is where do wild isopods get calcium? So aside from the trace amounts that they get from wood and leaf litter, uh, and they're, they're detrivores, which means that they uh, eat dead and dying materials. Uh, so they can derive it from a variety of sources. And one of the things that they'll do is they will eat dead uh, animals and they'll eat the uh, the bones and, and, and things like that and they will also get it from geological sources like limestone and rocks and uh, they'll get from shells from like eggs and they will get it from soil. Fun fact about isopods is people actually use them for calcium supplementation for reptiles uh, and they don't even have to dust them with uh, calcium powder. They just have such a high trace amounts of calcium in them that are really good to as feeders. If you don't supplement calcium, your colony will eventually slow down and it will collapse. This is one of the big mandatory items you have to have calcium. Uh, a lot of people overlook the importance of calcium. They'll put in, you know, they'll put in eggshells once or they'll put in, you know, a cuddle bone and then they will never resupply it and they will eventually pay for it down the road. Without calcium, the isopods weaken and they can't breathe, they have trouble trouble growing, they don't reproduce correctly, and they just have substantially higher rates of failed shedding or molting. So what options do you really have for calcium? With shells or cuddle bone, uh, I like to use snake skin uh, shed. You can use repti calcium that they use for feeders for reptiles, you can use rapashi calcium, you can use bone and antlers, or you can use montemurilonite clay, which is like a calcium clay that they use for like koe ponds and shrimp tanks. So with egg, you can just take, you know, eggs that you have in your kitchen, you don't have to wash them, salmonella is not a concern for isopods, and the goo that's inside of it you can actually leave it in there and it's got a ton of protein and the isopods will go crazy for it. Uh, one morning with the eggs and doing it, that goo, if you throw it straight into the isopod container, the mankind or the baby isopods could get stuck in it. So one of the things that I like to do is, you know, dry them out first, set them out for a day or so until it just gets uh, brittle and it doesn't have that moisture. And you can even grind them up into powder and uh, be able to better see it because this is really, really concentrated amounts of calcium. So if you grind it up into tinier bits, uh, you can see it disappear. It's a little bit easier to track the calcium consumption. Or you can take the shells and just turn them on their side and they'll use them as hides, which they really enjoy. So I do a mixture of both. I grind up some of it, sprinkle it in, and then I'll put a couple in upside down so they can get in and hide in it. The next option that's super popular to do is to supplement with cuttlefish bone, which is a bone from like an octopus-like creature, and they, they harvest it from the ocean, and they give it to, normally they give it to birds to supplement calcium for them. So you can buy it at any pet store, it's super cheap. I, I don't have any right now, because they're all in the tanks and they've been eaten up, but it's super soft. It's easier for them to kind of digest uh, and get uh, for the babies versus eggs, but they go through it super quick uh, and they, they really enjoy it. It's super easy. Another thing you can use is limestone. You can offer it as whole rocks or pellets. You can get that from uh, garden centers and when you offer it as a whole rock, it's pretty cool because they will actually burrow into the rocks and it'll then double as a hide. Uh, limestone is a good source because many isopod species come from places with high limestone content, like Procilio species and Cubaris. They come from places that have limestone caves. So it's a supplementation that is more like in mimicking their natural environment. So another thing you can do is 
supplement with bones, antlers, and snake skin. Bones take years to break down, so you can you can get like chicken bones or turkey bones or if any kind of animal bones that you have. Uh, it, it can have meat on it, do whatever. Just try not to have too much because that can attract pests. But uh, you can help speed up the breakdown process by actually like hitting the bone, crushing it up, breaking it. Uh, antlers are a really great option because the inside of them are hollow, so they'll double as like a hide. Now I don't, I don't go hunting or anything like that, but I know people that do. You can get it from people like that. And uh, snake skin, I have uh, have a snake. Whenever it sheds, I take it out and I immediately throw it in the isopod pen, and they just go ape for it. They love it and they just swarm it, and it will be gone within like a couple of hours. So the last option we have are powdered calciums. Now a lot of people will be familiar with powdered calciums if you deal with reptiles. You know, you'll dust your feeders and then you throw them in to make sure that your reptiles are getting the calcium that they need. Uh, those are a little bit expensive. You use what you got if you have them and you want to use it for that, you can. My go-to is this calcium powder that they use for uh, koi ponds and shrimp. Before I did isopods, I'm really into fish tanks. I love shrimp. I've been using this stuff for a while. And this huge four pound uh, container cost me like 25, 26 bucks on Amazon. So I've been using this for like years and still it's like not even halfway done. So I highly recommend if you're gonna have a decent amount of colonies to use this. Now while I always have this powdered stuff in all of my tubs as an option because it's a powder and it's very, very fine and the baby man kai can get to the calcium. Now, if they are using eggshells, if you're using limestone, you're using all this other stuff, uh, it can be harder for them to actually get, eat the calcium and get it into them. So once I put in this, the powdered stuff, my population just booms. I always have it available. I always have two calcium options available. You know, there's, I highly suggest having multiple options because you know eggshells are really, really concentrated, and I know that the uh, adults really like them. The powdered, the babies love them. You can mix this into the soil so they can be everywhere. It's easy to kind of throw that in. You know, snake skin and, and bone and stuff like that. Will uh, you can throw in, but definitely, there's no wrong answer on what to use for calcium. Just give them options. You know, I, I feel like. I've had tons of success when you have, when it comes to, you know, food, calcium, hides, wood, leaves. If you give them options, you know, variety is the spice of life. And isopods really, really uh, enjoy having lots of things. Because in the wild, they don't just have like monolithic uh, options. You know, they don't just have one options. They always have multiple things. And they kind of like, oh, you know, I prefer this and they'll go do that. So it really will help with keeping your isopods happy and making sure that your colony continues to grow and be fun. So now I'm just going to show you guys my clown isopods and I'm going to just feed them some calcium. Little guy right there. So you can see I kind of have some powdered stuff around but I'm going to put in the snake skin. Throw it in. This is an older one. Just unravel a little bit, give it to them. They'll go ape in there. And you can take eggs and kind of put them upside down. Or I can crush them up, kind of have the bigger pieces. And kind of bury it some there. Bury it some like right there. And then for the calcium, it literally is just a powder and I can sprinkle it or I can just dump it into one pile and they will get it like they when they want it so that's about it now let's see if we can get any photos of these clowns not right there not there there we go look at those guys all right, so I'll put these guys back, leave them to it, and they will enjoy that calcium and get strong. 
So that about wraps up the calcium video. I'm going to be doing videos on all aspects of isopod husbandry and kind of put a source where people can get all the knowledge that I've kind of learned from my years of keeping isopods. There's a couple of good isopod YouTube content creators and there's some information out on the web, but sometimes I feel like it's not all in one place. And so I'm going to try to do a video series to kind of give that information to you. Uh, comment, like, subscribe, ask any questions. Tell me what kind of calcium supplementation that you guys use or what does or doesn't work for you. And just kind of uh, let me know that you're watching. I appreciate your time. I'm Isopod Mike. And just remember, there's no such thing as too many bugs.